One Day Leader, our contestants are preparing to take us through a journey of accessing tertiary education and giving some light on why there are so many learners who need to complete their matric. Welcome to One Day Leader. My name is Tumelo Mutotwani. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, according to a report by SouthAfrica.info, around 8 million South African school children are exempted from paying school fees, while 9 million children are getting food at school. And yet statistics indicate that 47% of these learners drop out of school before they even reach grade 10. And of the 53% that are left in school, only 16% qualify for university after grade 12. Well, today our contestants are investigating why there is such a high rate of dropouts in high school and assist learners at Itutang High School, a school in Ranfontein, to get information on what kind of opportunities they can access when they leave matric. Well, please share your views on our topic tonight on our Facebook page. It's One Day Leader SA and on Twitter, it's at One Day Leader. Do hashtag One Day Leader. Now, just last week, we had our very first elimination where we said a very sad goodbye to leader number two, Siposen Kosi Malimela. And now we are down to five candidates today who will share their vision statements. Now, without any further ado, let's head over to leader number one, Swanelo Focus. Thank you, Tony. In the words of Lotus, Louis Clinton, I hope that young people who take school for granted or are thinking of dropping out will learn from the story of the girls kidnapped by the Boko Haram and realize that ed education is what makes you a threat to terrorists and a blessing to the rest of the world. Thank you so much. Swanelo. Thank you. That was leader number one. Now we hand over to leader number three. Her name is Natasha Mazom. My vision is of a South Africa that recognizes and embraces the changing role of women within our society. A South Africa where our mothers, our wives and our sisters are at the forefront of driving both economical and social change. My vision is of a South Africa that is women-led. Thank you so much, Natasha. Interesting, especially it'd been Women's Month. But now we head over to a gentleman. He's leader number four. His name is Shablan Isbi. South Africa. My dream is to instill a sense of hope to the future and current analysis of South Africa through action, to motivate a solution-based economy rather than a problem-notifying society, and through leadership. I salute you. Thank you, Mr. Zbia. And our leader number five, well, her name is Samantha Baynard. Moleni Mzanzi, in terms of education, I believe that South Africa can no longer afford a proliferation of a vicious cycle that allows for few children in privileged schools to enjoy a head start over the children of the poor in this country. To the students of the University of Fort Hare, who were expelled um, based on striking for NASFAS and access to education. We are behind you, you are not alone. And that goes for students of, of, of institutions of higher learning across South Africa. Your cause is our cause. Together right. you should not be denied an opportunity to further your studies. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Samantha. Okay, now we hand over to our very last leader, but certainly not least, his name is Octavia Shaban. During the former regime, government weaponized education and crippled the black majority of our land. They segregated education because they knew that education would lead to revolution. And I know that education is power. And education is the justice that our people and the freedom of tomorrow. The apartheid government knew that education is power. The question is, do you know that education is power? Thank you, Octavia. Looking very suave and retro there. Thank you so much, Leader Six. And thank you, of course, to our candidates uh, for just giving us their vision statements. Now it's time for you to also think about what they have just said. But on that note, let's take a look at our scoreboard for this week. And at number three, we have Samantha Baynard with one point. At number two, we have Jablanis Bia with two points. And number one leading the scoreboard is Natasha Mazombe with three points. Now we also have, um, of course, other uh, uh, voting system that we're gonna show you a little bit later on, but now for our series overall scoreboard. Now we have Jablani Zbia with eight points leading the pack. We have Natasha Mazombe snuggling behind with seven points. Swanelo and Samantha are sharing the number three sport with six points. And Octavia Shabang was there with five points. <laughs> 
Well, keep voting for your favorite candidate to stay in the competition on our SMS line, which is 34020. If you're wondering how to do it, well, here's how you can vote. To vote for your favorite leader, SMS Leader 1, Swanelo Fogas. Leader 3, Natasha Mazombe. Leader 4, Jablani Zbia. Leader 5, Samantha Baynon. And Leader 6, Octavia Shabam. That's exactly how you can vote South Africa for your favorite leader. And now, for the first time this very season, our judges have the power to save a candidate from elimination. Well, if you remember just last week, they chose not to use their power. And I'm consistently wondering when they'll eventually use the very much so needed power for them to save their candidates. But right now, though, let's meet our resident judges. A writer, a public speaker and social activist, Shaka Sisulu is a founding member of Cheese Kids, a board member of Love Life and serves on the interim leadership task team of the ANC Youth League. Catherine Constantinidis is the Youth Network Generation Earth co-founder, executive director of Miss Earth SA and lead SA executive. Welcome to our judges, Shaka Sisulu and Catherine Constantinidis. Are you excited to be here? Always. What are you expecting? <laughs> We're expecting some fireworks. We're expecting you guys uh, to show us the kind of firecrackers that you are. That's why you made it here. Interesting. Well, welcome back, of course, to our episode. And this week, we also um, welcome our very guest judge who is here, of course, at One Day Leader. His name is Mr. Ahmed Esop. Now, he is the CEO of the Council on Higher Education. Now, he's worked as an independent consultant and as a visiting researcher at the Witt School of Education. And he was the Chief Director for Higher Education Planning and Coordination in the former Department of Education. Well, Mr. Ahmed, welcome Thank to you. One Day Leader. Round of applause for our guest judge. <laughs> now, can you kindly just tell us what the Council on Higher Education is in our current education system? Well, basically, the Council regulates higher education institutions, both public and private universities, and ensures that the quality of the programs that they offer are of a standard that's acceptable uh, for the country as a whole. All right. Catherine, do you think important, um, do you think rather education is important? I mean, in 2014, where you find young people are obsessed with being cool and not going to get educated? It's fundamental. I think it's the foundation of our society. It's the foundation that we lay for ourselves in the future we want to lead. Um, lead in, in whatever sphere. Yeah. So it's really important and I'm looking forward to the conversation, the discussion and the debate later on. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of important things are going to come out of that. Interesting. Thank you so much to our judges. And this week, well, we, wake up, we welcome rather another famous somebody. Well, his name is Amon Mogwena from Metro FM. Amon, welcome to One Day Leader. Thank you very much. What do you expect in this episode? Uh, just to uh, get a you know, some fireworks from the contestants and uh, hopefully to uh, take something away so I can uh, teach some people that listen to me every single day. A round of applause for our judges. Well, this week our candidates visited the Itudeng High School in Ranfontein where they tackled the topic of access to education. Now, although he was eliminated in last week's show, the candidates felt like they needed to invite Siposem Kosi Malimela to tag along on this one. And let's see how they approached it. Good morning leaders, your task today looks at access to education and high rates of dropouts in high schools. You will visit Itudeng High School in Ranfontein to investigate the above. You are expected to prepare and hold an exhibition that will inform scholars on various opportunities for further learning and improved academics performance. Your task leader for this week is Utswane. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. I'm a one day leader right now. I don't know if they've seen me, the kind of leader I am and how firm I can be, so I look forward to that. I'm not going to be bossy or dictator-like, but I will show a different side of me. 
I'm sure she's gonna do great, but I'm worried about she gets um, very um, nervous. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your two things, secondary school. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for this privilege to be able to touch lives on your behalf. Thank you, Jesus, for the leadership that you have endowed upon us in the mighty name of Jesus. For this task, there is a leader. And so I'd like to set some ground rules, you know, and I hope everyone can follow, you know, because I know good leaders are definitely good followers. If you can lead, you can follow, or you need to be able to. I think they were shocked <laughs> to get rules because we hardly give each other rules, but then that's just how, how I would like to be led and how I like to lead. Natasha and Octavia, you're going to speak to grade eight, and then Jabu and Sam, you're going to speak to grade 12. Okay. Are we clear? Yes, I'd just All like right. to post, post, can I speak to the grade eights with Natasha? I don't know if you know. You want to speak to grade yeah, 12? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's go. Twanelo and Sipo Senkosi headed to the deputy principal's office. What is the ratio between students in grade 8 to those in grade 12? Oh, for grade 8, uh, the ratio is at 1 is to 48. And then 1 is to 25 in grade 12, okay. if I may put it that. Still having the community that's not that serious about wow. education. Okay. They're coming from homes of parents who are not educated. Most of parents, as they say, they work in the farms. You're only, only metric, ne? Yeah. So who wants to be what? Put your hand up if you've applied. Oh, OK. The people that didn't put up their hands, what are you going to do next year? Do you guys remember that time when you were in grade 8, not so long ago? You guys were a bigger class, yes? yes? Can you guys tell me what happened to some of your friends? Where are they? Drop out. Drop out. OK. One of your friends. What happened to one of your friends? She fell pregnant, then she dropped out. She fell pregnant and dropped out. I noticed that it was becoming about Octavia um, in terms of who had a better motivation or who had a better argument. The marks that count the most are the final marks, ne? <laughs> it's not always about the marks. I, mean, I know we're putting emphasis about yes. marks, but it's important to also engage in things mm. like leadership, mm. like volunteering, building yourself up and building a resume. Mm. So our further institutions can actually see that. They did not do what I asked them to do, and that was to ask the learners questions that we agreed on, you know, in terms of how do you perceive education and all those things. Instead, they, they saw it as an opportunity to do motivational speaking. It is beautiful, but it was an issue. I don't want to be dependent, like depending on someone. I'm looking forward to ask my mom, I want this and that, just that. So I'm looking forward to work next year. I depend on the social grant in one I'm And Young head. My honest reason is that I see many people by local Bafidita school and then Babu Tal or Palagona. So, by the Zukuma Hayengua, I will be ready to write next year. So, then now I can write a hope next year. Kela Pile Nagaro Kepen and Lepampir. At the end of the day, Tswanelo went back to her team to find out how the day went. Guys, how was the day? No comments. Okay. Okay, well, from a tricks shoot, no, you, you go first. Go through. Go through. <laughs> I think for, for, from a tricks, we, I know when we first arrived, just walking past, Ock observed that it might be a, a tough class to, to engage. Hmm. But actually engaging with them, they were a really pleasant class. And yeah, it was a matter of ma motivating them and also gaining information from them regarding or relating to the questions that we had established as the group earlier. I had a kind of a problem with Sam. Uh, <laughs> so what happens is we were there to extract information, but we were going off script. Yeah. And Sam kind of made it like a motivational thing where she was trying to rally the troops. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it was very about her and how to yeah. get past the struggle type thing. I didn't say it in the beginning, but I felt exactly the same way about Octavia. It's not the first platform as well where we go totally off the script. It becomes about promoting himself. Um, even, and he's very clever at doing it as well. He doesn't come out with it. He's doing it right now. Um, it's, you know, I feel that, yeah, um, she personally thinks I was being disingenuous. I don't remember campaigning at all. Interesting. Now, after the break, we take a look at how the contestants have dealt with this heartbreaking issue.
Fresh and One Day Leader, and my name is Tumelo Mutotwane. Well, don't forget to send your comments on our SMS line by texting ODL and then your comment to 34020. Now, this week, our candidates visited Itudeng High School in Ranfontein where they investigated why there's such a high dropout rate. And let's see how they did. Yenetu Mugabe Masuta, he's a past one day leader contestant. I'm really excited to speak to him because Unal Foundation, I can to sign any foundation to sign children back in rural schools or township schools. And I'd like for you to meet our metric group. Okay. And there's 71 of them. You're gonna, sure. you know, you're gonna talk to them. Maybe we can also help them with understanding that it's not only universities, there's sure. FETs, there's colleges and so forth. Sure. So yeah, I look forward to working with Tusan. Sure, anytime. Uh, that's, that's basically what we do on a daily basis. Wow. Uh, so you just need to tell us uh, what they need help with. There's just one girl, her name is Dimpo. So <laughs> Dimpo is in the church, she does well in school. She feels obliged to provide for her family. So sure. we, I spoke to her and how she can meet with you and share her story. The leaders began to prepare to work hand in hand with Tusanani Foundation and Itudeng High. Sun, if he talks to you, that thing happens, and then there's a motivational thing. Hello, leaders. I are back from. Unfortunately, I have bad news. We're no longer doing the seven-minute motivational talks. That has been cancelled. I think it's a bit tough for the leaders to adapt to the changes because there was a lot of questions about it, and there's a lot of uh, I wouldn't say confusion, but opposition to it because they're, they're not sure what's going to happen. Despite arriving late, once they met with the kids, the candidates gave this assignment their all. I do believe they need a bit more, they need to be a bit more organized. A bit more research would have assisted. So this is how it goes. One more time, one more time. Let's go. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Knees together. Knees together. Toes together. Toes together. Knees together, toes together, toes together. Social media is so important and to the fact that when you come for an interview, now I will go and just say Mamelo and look and all the pictures that she, that comes up with Mamelo, do they, do they go with what she's telling me? She's telling me she's passionate, she wants me to pay for her studies, but is her Facebook saying that? Or is she standing with a Facebook with a beer bottle and she wants us to employ her? Do you know what I'm saying? Things are going well as planned, but you know, the stress of having to be at three workshops at one go, you know, monitor each leader, are they doing their thing? Stressful. Do you believe you are important? Do you think you are special and you are important? Yes. You believe that, ne? Yes. Okay, because I want to tell you grade nine is very important because some of the decisions you will make this year it might determine your whole future. Do you see how important you are? Swanello went on a hunt to find Mugabe Masuta for a conversation he had to have with Dimpo, which promised to change her life forever. You must bring a certified copy of your grade 11 results and a certified copy of your ID. For financial aid, don't forget, certified copy of your mother's ID, an affidavit saying that she doesn't work, a certified copy of IDs of all your siblings uh, that, you're that you're staying with. And then we'll arrange for you to go to VET and we'll pick those applications together. And then for you, Jay, we'll apply online at, uh, uh, at a computer lab because it's free. Then I'll hear from you, but let's speak on WhatsApp. Cheers. I can motivate you at the best how I know, but the only permanent motivation is self-motivation. Are you all clear? You are part of an unjustifiably low numbers of people who reach metric, which means you are going to behave like a matriculant. Not like anybody else, but a matriculant. The power of choice gives you the capacity to get past any excuse, to change any and every part of your life in an instant. So Anello as our leader, uh, very strong, um, but one thing I would say is that perhaps delegate a bit more because I see a little bit of pressure on her side um, and that's... 
perhaps because she just wa she is that strong leader, you know, that wants to ensure everything is done to the courts on point, 100%. Interesting collaborations there between the candidates and Tusanani Foundation. But after the break, we find out how the learners were impacted from Itudeng High School. And then we move on to our debates. Stay tuned. You're still tuned into One Day Leader right here on SABC One. Well, please send through your comments um, on our Facebook page. It's One Day Leader SA. And on Twitter, we are at One Day Leader and do hashtag One Day Leader. Now, the learners at Itudeng High School got information on how to access opportunities in institutions of higher learning. But the question is, did this help? Let's find out. I would like to help today because my brain is a little bit this wonderful event Workshop in and it's not every day that opportunities like this come by and I've learned to appreciate every little thing that every person does for me. Studying for grade 8, I can't believe I can ask for school. Mostly, I do more I do more I do more only to find out. I do more for but lack of information, when I send information, I the contestants had an idea of what needed to be done. They were very enthusiastic, they were energetic. Their energy could be felt on the side of the learners themselves. A bit more research would have assisted, but I'm willing to come back here with the contestants uh, beyond one day leader and make sure that we can solidify what we started today, bring the accurate information uh, to the school in partnership with the principal and make sure that these kids are fully exposed to what is available to them. Well, congratulations once more on the collaboration between Tusanani, Itudeng High School and the One Day Leader candidates. But before we get to the judges, I mean, we'd like to hear your comments on our Facebook page. And I currently have our Facebook page with me. I'm just going to scroll through a few comments. Um, we have um, one from Itumeleng Tsakhan and she says, or he says, rather, I say before we prepare learners for varsity, let us prepare them for high school education. I mean, what is what good is it solving a problem at its midpoint? All right, Itumeleng. Let's find another one. Lawrence Mejua says, let us embrace new innovations like smart boards and tablets. Our children learn best when they touch and feel. Well, I suppose I'm a smarty pants, aren't I? I have my tablet right here next to me. All right, last but not least, we have one from Bongani. And Bongani says, education must be in harmony. Mind, spirit and physical development. I dare you lot will be prevented. Well, thank you so much um, for your comments. And we look forward, of course, to reading all your comments. Keep sending them. And I'm sure the judges do too, as well as the contestants. And they will now ask, of course, direct questions to our candidates. Judges, we'll start with Shaka. Do you have anything you'd like to say to Thanks. us? Yeah, guys, I mean, it uh, looked, looked really great. Looked like it really came together. I, I want to ask about the beginning, Jabu. Uh, what did, you were uh, asked to be with uh, Samantha and you opted to go with Natasha. What's happening there? Um, it's, it's nothing personal at all to, uh, to Sam or to Natasha. They, um, uh, above leaders, I think they're my good friends. But I feel like I could connect well with um, those guys who are actually in grade eight and in grade nine because I, w I have personal experience working with them. So I wanted to give them my best rather than something that I haven't done before. Okay, so it wasn't about no, going, it wasn't okay. About personal conference. <laughs> All right, Catherine. My question is for Chuanelo. I want to find out from you, the brief specifically stated an exhibition, but you opted to do something else. What happened? All right, the issue is that we had, we had lack of resources. I only had two days to, ex to execute this. Therefore, I had to do what, what, I had, what I had to do with what I had. And I told the leaders, we need to touch lives. And we want to teach the young people there that, you know what, we have the greatest resources, with, we have the greatest resources within us. So we use what's within us to show them that they, they can use what's within them to move ahead in life. 
Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Swanelo and Mr. Ahmed. Assam. Great job. My question is to Octavia. What did you learn? What were the learning curves from this exercise that you picked up? Uh, so I learned uh, on, this, on this exercise that uh, when you have passionate individuals working towards the goal, there is bound to be a clash of minds and ideologies. And it's important to separate your personal and your personal and your professional. And that's something that we did going forward. So yeah, that's what I learned. All right, our judges seem satisfied. Thank you so much for those questions. Now, getting back to today, well, our debate topic for this week is how do we reduce high incidence of school dropouts and prepare learners for varsity? But before the candidates can even deliberate, let's have a look at our debate rules. Every leader has a set of instructions and disciplines to live by. These are the rules for the one-day leader debates. You have 30 seconds to state your vision statement, 60 seconds for the opponent to challenge, and 30 seconds to conclude your debate. And those are our debate rules. And without any further ado, our first debate is between Natasha and Samantha. Natasha, you begin this debate and your 30 seconds begin now. So dropouts are not the result of, an I of a single isolated incident. Instead, they are the combination of related factors that, that are both financial and social in nature. So we cannot blame dropouts solely on poverty, teenage pregnancy, family structure, substance abuse, lack of stimulation or of support for that matter. But instead, as a combination of all of the above that contribute towards dropouts and finding a solution from that point on is the way forward. Thank you so much, Natasha. All right, now we're heading over to you, Samantha. You have 60 seconds, of course, to challenge. Beginning now. Thank you so much, uh, Natasha. I wanted to just simply ask you the question, what is that solution in your view? Thank you. So this is what I propose. Um, in, in, in terms of dropouts, um, we need a comprehensive individual monitoring of learners within schools. Now, the problem is that we simply have too many children as opposed to one teacher. Teachers can't give as much attention as is needed to one student. So what happens is that we have um, quantity over quality. We have quantity education, we have an access to education, but the quality thereof is what's the issue. Next, why should only private school kids have access to Natasha, psychologists, to educational psychologists, Natasha, and guidance to counselors? How do you solve what the issue is that of teachers, the ratio between those, teachers and pupils, how are you going to address that is issue? It's, it's easy for us to identify problems, but how are you going to address that ratio between the teachers and the students? Because it's a valid point you raised, but how do you address it practically? Okay, so what I'm saying is that there's, the ratio is bad. We have too many students and one teacher. So what I'm saying is that instead of having lots of schools to accommodate lots of learners, we should have schools where... Unfortunately, the, time is up, Natasha. Thank you so much. Well... You have, Natasha, you have 30 seconds now to conclude on your vision statement. Okay, so like I said, dropouts are not the result of a single isolated incident and therefore we should tackle these incidents. So what I'm saying is that in preparation for varsity, we also should have mentorship programs that are link high school learners to, um, to young professionals so that they have an idea of what they want to do and they have a practical idea of that. I'm also saying that private professional bodies should also get involved with high school learners and not only at varsity level. This ensures that the relationship is there beforehand and when they get to the relevant level, the relationship has already been established. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Natasha. All right, Samantha, now you open up your vision statement in 30 seconds, beginning now. Thank you so much, Siswan. What I believe in terms of education is that we aren't just speaking to access, but we're speaking about quality. And when we speak about quality, we speak to the curriculum, but not only the curriculum, but the schooling environment as a whole, that both teachers and learners um, experience currently as it stands. What I'm saying is we need highly motivated teachers. In other words, the teaching profession must be valued in this country. Schools that perform well must be given incentives by government. We need a curriculum from child, early childhood development aimed at producing Thank skills. Thank you so much, Samantha. Natasha, 60 seconds to challenge, starting now. So I picked up on highly motivated teachers. You say we should have highly, motiva highly motivated teachers. First of all, how do we highly motivate the teachers? And second of all, what does it Natasha, help to have, what does it help to have high motiv highly motivated teachers mm. without highly motivated learners? Okay, Natasha, if you had listened to me, number one, my time here. If you had listened to me, what I was saying was if you have highly, if you have teachers who are performing well, that means they are going to, they, and, and they are um, given incentives by government because of that good performance, they will be motivated to, to produce results in the classroom. The same time with the learners and children, if they are motivated by um, good quality learning conditions in terms of the teachers and in terms of um, students from institutions of high learning who come back and visit them, that should be a mandatory community service for those students to come 
back and visit scholars in from grade eight all the way to metric and motivate them and say, I've actually made it and conquered this um, so schooling environment. So if I hear you correctly, you're saying so that it's so about, long as the can teachers I just are finish, Thank you so much, ladies. Your time is up now. Samantha, you have 30 seconds to conclude your vision statement. Thank you so much. Again, I want to repeat that we need to have a, a schooling environment that is conducive for both teachers, the educators, as well as the learners. Um, we need to have teachers who are motivated and how that is done is by the fact that they perform, they will be incentivized. We, we um, have highly motivated learners because people who have gone through that come back and say, listen, I've been through this, I've made it, I've passed. That should be a mandatory community service on the part of learners or students of institutions of higher learning. Thank you so much, Samantha. Time is up. A round of applause for our very first debate. Wow, interesting points there, judges. A few seconds, of course, to deliberate while I remind you at home to keep voting on, of course, our SMS line, your leader's number to the number 34020. And you can also just comment, be the judge at home and tell us how you feel about our very first debate on Facebook and Twitter. All right, Ms. Sh Mr. Shaka. Oh, well, we're going to pass this over to our to the guest lady. judge. All right, our guest judge. And okay. uh, Mr. Mr. Ahmed Esop, will you tell us who you think we should be going with? Well, I think the important thing is to look at where the vision is. What are we trying to do with the education system? We know what the problems are, and we know that there's a comprehensive range of reasons why people don't perform as they should. So in the sense that there was a vision about what we should do, what should happen with the curriculum, the kinds of incentive we should give to teachers and so forth, I think Samantha uh, had, had, had a better focus on the vision, whereas Natasha focused on what the problems were and how we understand the problems. So, so Samantha is the winner. Samantha a round of applause for Leader 5, Samantha. <laughs> Congratulations to you for winning this round of debate. And these were just some of the very interesting views that these young people have for you. We're getting more straight after this. Welcome back to One Day Leader and we are coming to you live from our Henley Studios in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. Now our topic for this evening is how do we reduce high incidence of school dropouts as well as prepare students for varsity. Now our next debate is between Swanelo and Octavia with Octavia starting this debate and your 30 seconds begin now. We as a nation have lost the value of education and we're sending our schools to become followers instead of leaders. Our curriculums are creating aspiring employees as opposed to innovators and our teachers have lost the passion to build tomorrow. Despite the increase in spending, education is still struggling and all stakeholders are to blame and these stakeholders are the guardian, the learner, government and teachers. And to stop dropouts and produce more varsity ready students, all stakeholders need to play their role in taking tomorrow back. We need to understand that as a student, Gigumuntu, Gabantu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Octavia. Well, your time is up and you were actually on spot. Well, Twanella, this is your opportunity to challenge him in 60 seconds, beginning now. Right, Octavia, I'd like you to elaborate because I found that it was rather vague when you started talking about how it's the stakeholders and so forth. Can you elaborate more on that so we can address that? Okay, so there's four stakeholders. There's the guardian, there's the learner, there's the government, and there's the teacher. The guardian has the responsibility to communicate the importance that education is and the gravity of the opportunity that education is to the child. There are countries here in the world where learning is a luxury only for the rich and the privileged, but in South Africa, it's a democratic right. Furthermore, the learner needs to understand and have a desire to be educated. No amount of money or resources can give a child the fortitude to improve themselves. It needs to come from within. And when we look at government, we need to address the deficiencies that education system contains. We need to be swift in the what dispensation the of resources. Here's a deficiency. We need to reject stories of horror where a young Limpopo boy who fell into a hole while relieving himself because there was no we toilet. Is that not a reality we need to know about? When you speak about no. we need to reject it, do we ignore it and go no, for the next No, we need to reject it. We happening. need to stand up. We need to communicate. It is government's role. So we communicate. That is and how does that it is your go, role how does to communicate that go in line to with the, the topic government? Your time's up. Thank you so much, leaders. Well, Octavia, now you have a chance to conclude your vision statement. South Africa, I'm talking to you. Education is my passion. And Nelson Mandela once said that <clears throat> they said in his great life that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Let us use education to change South Africa. I said it before and I'll say it again. As a learner, we all have a role in education to play. So let's stop dropouts and move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
All right. We hand over to you, Tuanela, now to give us your vision statement. 30 seconds, beginning now. Thank you, Dumelo. Providing recyclable feminine products to rural school girls, having community daycare centers for the children of teen mothers, and removing the stigma attached to remedial classes for children with learning disabilities will reduce the dropout rate, especially in, high in primary and secondary school. Then we can prepare learners for university by firstly making application fees to be free. We can prepare students for university through grade 11 and 12 life orientation lessons, which will address all Thank you so much, Tuanelo. Well, Octavia, this is your opportunity challenge in 60 seconds. So now. So I have a couple of questions. You are focused more on giving to the feminine and the disabled. No, no, it's not about focusing on getting to the feminine. You need to understand there's a reality in our country, Octavia. Mm -hmm. There are children who do not go to school because they, they go through their mi mi monthly menstrual cycle and they cannot go to school. We need to address that because it is an access to education. What about, what about, about the, the boys? boys? They don't menstruate monthly. Hello. No, but like they, they also drop menstruate. out. How it's do not I only females menstruating that, because but Octavia, it's they a drop out. No, 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 no. We need I don't to understand why you be inclusive. Inequality is a problem in our country. It's not just women, Octavia, it's not so just children, it's not just Do disabled, I ignore it, it is because I'm a feminist well. and you have a problem with that? Be, no, no, I address it, Octavia, because no, it's an no, issue no, in South no. Africa. No, okay, let's move forward if you won't hear my point. So how do we fund giving free applications to everybody? Does the taxpayer fund that? Does the teacher fund that? Are you going to fund it? Octavia, it's not a matter of what, what's being found. Understand that at UJ, you can apply free online. We can do that for everyone. And you, every university I come from have Nelspreet. that. I live in a two-room house. There is no Wi-Fi, there's no computer, there's nothing. Then maybe nothing. we can look at having internet Should access in these communities. It's not a matter Thank of... Thank you so much, leaders. Well, Tuanelo, now wrap up your vision statement. <laughs> Beginning now. Providing feminine products to rural school girls will definitely reduce the dropout rate because they cannot go to school simply because they are menstruating. And when you mix, when you miss five days every month and you miss sixty days in, in a year, it has a big impact on your education. It does impact how you access your education. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Swanel. A round of applause for that debate. What did you think? Very interesting, very interesting. Well, I'll leave it over to the judges to deliberate for a few seconds there while I continue to run their PR, actually. You need to vote for them. And you can do so by SMSing their number to the number 34020. Go to our Facebook page, be the judge, and decide who you think took this round of debate. Catherine, you ready? Okay, I think that for us it's really important that we mention that, Chanelo, I think you need to have... I like what you were saying, but you need to have more control. You need to be a lot more focused in your in your answer, your deliberation, and your delivery. I think this round goes to Octavia. I think you gave a great a great case. Your your content wasn't all there though, but you were able to deliver um, something that appealed to us. But I think you need to work on the actual content of what you were presenting. Octavia takes this round of debate. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Now, our final debate is between Jabu and an anonymous opponent, because since we're down now to just five candidates, Jabu gets to select who he wants to debate with today. Jabu, who have you selected? Um, I'd like to debate against Octavia, please. Very brave man. Very brave man. Okay. Interesting. Now, you start this debate with your vision statement beginning now. The Sunday Times yesterday had a report by Minister of Basic Education, Angela Motecha, states that part of life orientation should include career counselling as well as the well-being of students. I support this vision, but I say it needs to be adhered to grade 9 students before subject cho choice in grade 10. Grade 9s need to be taught of alternative means of education, such as technicons and, and high schools, and which is responding to the goal, the 13th goal, which is the department saying that these rates need to improve access to youth education, as well as the problem at hand. Thank you so much, Jablani. Well, Octavia, you have challenged Swalano before. Can you challenge? Jabu, let's, let's see. Go. Your six seconds begin now. So, Jabu, I think that's a really good idea to start at the grade nines, but the problem is I feel that it's unrealistic. Firstly, if we look at it in terms of how do we get those people to go out there into the rural areas. I said to Swanelo that I come through at Nelspreet and I don't have internet access. But how do you plan on reaching out to everybody, not yes. just a privileged few? I agree. But if we look at the stats, Octavia, from NIDS, which is a national panel study from the presidency, it says that the problem starts from grade nines upwards and it says that the, uh, the um, access and the dropout rate starts from grade nines going up. Hence why I tackled it directly and I said we need to start at the grade nine because that is the root of the problem, Octavia. It's saying that these kids don't know career guidance and they don't know what to study, hence going through and it, it responds to the question saying we no, need... There are countries here in the world where learning is a 
luxury only for the rich and the privileged, but in South Africa, it's a democratic right. Furthermore, the learner needs to understand and have a desire to be educated. No amount of money or resources can give a child the fortitude to improve themselves. It needs to come from within. And when we look at government, we need to address the deficiencies that the education system contains. We need to be swift in the what dispensation the of resources. Here's a deficiency. We need to reject stories of horror where a young Limpopo boy who fell into a hole while relieving himself Is that because not a there was no we toilet. Need to know about? When you speak about no. we need to reject it, do we ignore it and go no, forward and act like these are not it. happening? No, we need to stand up. We need to communicate. It is government's role. So we communicate. And role. how does that, is your go, role how does that go in line with the, the topic we're talking about? Time's up. Today. Thank you so much, leaders. Well, Octavia, now you have a chance to conclude your vision statement. South Africa, I'm talking to you. Education is my passion. And Nelson Mandela once said that... <clears throat> it said in his great life that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Let us use education to change South Africa. I said it before and I'll say it again. As a learner, we all have a role in education to play. So let's stop dropouts and move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We hand over to you, Tuanela, now to give us your vision statement. 30 seconds, beginning now. Thank you, Dumelo. Providing recyclable feminine products to rural school girls, having community daycare centers for the children of teen mothers, and removing the stigma attached to remedial classes for children with learning disabilities will reduce the dropout rate, especially in, high school, in primary and secondary school. Then we can prepare learners for university by firstly making application fees to be free. We can prepare students for university through grade 11 and 12 life orientation lessons, which will address all factors. Thank you so much, Tuanelo. Well, Octavia, this is your opportunity challenge in 60 seconds. So so I, couple, so I have a couple of questions. You are uh, focused more on giving to the feminine and the disabled. No, no, it's not about focusing on getting to the feminine. You need to understand there's a reality in our country, Octavia. Mm -hmm. There are children who do not go to school because they, they go through their mi mi monthly menstrual cycle and they cannot go to school. We need to address that because it is an in access to education. The what, what about, about the, the boys? boys? They don't menstruate monthly. Hello. No, but like they, they also drop menstruate. out. How it's do not I do that? It's not only females menstruating because they drop out. But Octavia, it's a fact that we need no, to no, focus no. on. We need I don't to, understand why you want to be Inequality is a problem in our country. Inequality. It's not just women, Octavia, it's not just children, it's not just Do disabled. Do I ignore it, it because I'm a feminist well. and you have a problem with that? Be, no, I address it, Octavia, because no, it's an no, issue no, in South no. Africa. No, okay, let's move forward if you want to hear my point. So how do we fund giving free applications to everybody? Does the taxpayer fund that? Does the teacher fund that? Are you going to fund it? Octavia, it's not a matter of what, what's being found. Understand that at UJ, you can apply free online. We can do that for everyone. And you, every university I come from have Street. that. I live in a two-room house. There is no Wi-Fi. There's no computer. There's then maybe nothing. we can look what at having internet Should access in these communities. It's not a matter Thank of... Thank you so much, leaders. Well, Tuanelo, now wrap up your vision statement. <laughs> Beginning now. Providing feminine products to rural school girls will definitely reduce the dropout rate because they cannot go to school simply because they are menstruating. And when you mix, when you miss five days every month and you miss 60 days in, in a year, it has a big impact on your education. It does impact how you access your education. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Swanel. A round of applause for that debate. What did you think? Very interesting, very interesting. Well, I'll leave it over to the judges to deliberate for a few seconds there while I continue to run their PR, actually. You need to vote for them. And you can do so by SMSing their number to the number 34020. Go to our Facebook page, Be The Judge, and decide who you think took this round of debate. Catherine, you ready? Okay, I think that for us it's really important that we mention that, Chanelo, I think you need to have... I like what you were saying, but you need to have more control. You need to be a lot more focused in your in your answer, your deliberation, and your delivery. I think this round goes to Octavia. I think you gave a great a great case. Your your content wasn't all there though, but you were able to deliver um, something that appealed to us. But I think you need to work on the actual content of what you were presenting. Octavia takes this round of debate. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Now, our final debate is between Jabu and an anonymous opponent, because since we're down now to just five candidates, Jabu gets to select who he wants to debate with today. Jabu, who have you selected? Um, I'd like to debate against Octavia, please. Very brave man. Very brave man. Okay. Interesting. Now, you start this debate with your vision statement beginning now. The Sunday Times yesterday had a report by Minister of Basic Education, Angela Motecha, states that part of life orientation should include career counselling as well as the well-being of students. I support this vision, but I say it needs to be adhered to grade 9 students before subject cho choice in grade 10. Grade 9s need to be taught of alternative means of education, such as technicons and, and high schools, and which is responding to the goal, the 13th goal, which is the department saying that these rates need to improve access to youth education as well as the problem at hand. 
Thank you so much, Jablani. Well, Octavia, you have challenged Swalano before. Can you challenge? Jabu, let's, let's see. Go. Your six seconds begin now. So, Jabu, I think that's a really good idea to start at the grade nines, but the problem is I feel that it's unrealistic. Firstly, if we look at it in terms of how do we get those people to go out there into the rural areas. I said to Swanelo that I come through at Nelspreet and I don't have internet access. Yes. But how do you plan on reaching out to everybody, not yes. just a privileged few? I agree. But if we look at the stats, Octavia, from NIDS, which is a national panel study from the presidency, it says that the problems start from grade nines upwards and it says that the, um, the um, access and the dropout rate start from grade nines going up. Hence why I tackled it directly and I said we need to start at the grade because that is the root of the problem, Octavia. It's saying that these kids don't know career guidance and they don't know what to study, hence going through, and it, it responds to the question saying, we no, need no, to prepare these learners Jabu, for Jabu, university. I, I agree with you yes. 100%. But how, realistically, 100%. how does that little boy in Mpumalanga get that, that, that mentorship? Perfect. Right, so we need to look at this. I know teachers have, um, they, one of their, their big majors is psychology, going into education. Why don't we Your use... Your time is up, unfortunately, Jablani, and in 30 seconds, wrap up your vision statement. Why don't we use their skills of psychology and actually educate these, um, these kids if they have problems in terms of teenage pregnancies and all these problems that were listed here from my, from my peers. We can create an engagement platform using the skills of psychology that these LO teachers currently have. It's in their qualifications, solving this problem as well as having career guidance for them to go on for in tertiary education. All right. Thank you, Jabu. All right, Octavia, this is your opportunity now to give us your vision statement one more time. If you test a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will go throughout its life thinking that it is stupid. No two students can learn the same way. Yet our education system and educators teach and test our learners in a uniform way and are surprised when there is a lack of performance and innovation. And at the end of the day, pass or fail, that same educator collects their salary and is on their way. And the learners are, are left to face the consequences of a broken system trying to produce model citizens. You want change? Everybody take responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. You guys are spot on, right on time. Very impressive, Jablani. You may now oppose him. Thank you very much, Shmi. So what I want to say is before when I heard you debating Twanelo, you spoke about what is the value of these educators and we need to include all stakeholders. My solution to you gave you my two stakeholders, the life orientation teacher as well as the grade 9 student to tackle access to education. I need solutions as a solution-based leader. I need you to tell me how you're going to include all four of your stakeholders, which was government, which was a guardian, and how we're going to... Some of these guardians aren't educated. How are we going to educate these guardians jabu, jabu, to go jabu, jabu, forth jabu, jabu. Question, getting question, their children through school? Question. Okay, so here it is. Here it is. I got two solutions. I won't go back there. I'll keep it here. So if two students, if we need to link teacher salaries to learners' performance. If students are doing well, the teacher is paid well. If only some students are doing well, the teacher is paid in that proportion that did well. This will inspire teachers to work harder to ensure that, te that learners are more right, competent. Octavia, because we must if understand the teachers are striking because they're not getting paid enough. We want, we, yes, we want money, Octavia, but we need to be very realistic in the solutions and the resources that we have as students, as teachers, and as the four stakeholders. Thank you that so much, Shavlani. Well, let's leave it right there. Octavia, this is your opportunity now to round off your vision statement in 30 seconds. My second solution was because because it is the poor that make up the majority of the dropouts, we need to incentivize the poor to stay in school. And an example of this is to top up social grants for educational results, providing additional social money to families for students who achieve above 70% pass rate and matriculation. We need to inspire education, not just talk about it or pay. We need to be out there and be about education. Thank you. A round of applause for this round of debate. Very interesting right there. Judges, I don't know if you want to give us your answer now. You, sound, you seem Ooh. very convinced. Yeah, OK. <laughs> OK, my man. Uh, that was great. It was a great intro. I wish you had brought your idea about topping up uh, earlier into your intro. But I've got to say, this round belongs to Jawu. You gave it. You gave it horns, you used your time well, you also stole his time. You were fantastic, you were on fire. Round of applause for Jablani Zbia. <laughs> Congratulations, Leader 4, for taking that round. But Octavia shouldn't complain though, I mean, he, he got the piece. So he, he's like, listen, I'm trying to share right now, okay? <laughs> no, the audience will be for him. <laughs> Interesting enough. Well, well, thank you so much to our judges. And of course, for this week, our voting lines are about to close down. So make sure that you don't miss an opportunity to vote for your favorite leader. But of course, SMSing the word leader and their number, of course, the numbers candidate to 34020. Now, should the candidate win? Let's have a look at what they stand to take home.
the next 13 weeks, our six candidates battle to become one day leader for season three. One of them will shadow the NYDA chairperson on his local and continental trips, get 300,000 rands in cash and 150,000 rands for charity of their choice. And a five day trip to New York City to attend the annual JCI Global Partnership Summit, sponsored by the JCI South Africa. Well, a lovely prize that is for our winner and I would not mind taking along to the trip. Well, after the break, we speak to, of course, DJ M on Mukwena from Metro FM and we, of course, announce our winner. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our very final segment. Now, um, Natasha could not join us because she's not feeling well and wish her a very speedy recovery. But today, of course, we're discussing access to tertiary education and the high incidences of dropouts in high school. Now, we've invited DJ Emon Mukwena from Metro FM to actually give one of these guys a tough time. Emon, welcome back. Thank you. Now, I understand you have a question for one of our candidates? Yes, Jabu. A simple question indeed. If given a task to... Uh sort of give hope to uh, the, the dropout. What would you do to ignite the fire back into their lives? Very briefly, Jabu. Thank you very much. I would, like I said in my statement, I would get um, life orientation teachers on board because they do have that qualification in terms of psychology. So I'd get them to motivate and engage with those people that want to drop out so we can keep the retention of them inside of the high school. Thank you so much, Jabu. And thank you so much, Eamon, for joining us. Thank Round you. of applause. Alrighty, now then, we take a look at our final scoreboard for today. Well, in our final scoreboard, there you have it. We have Jablan Isbia topping the charts with 10 points. We have Samantha Baynon, well, right behind him with 8 points. Natasha Mazomba, Octavia Shabangu, they're sharing the third point with 7 points. And Swanelo Foga is trailing behind with just 6 points. Congratulations, Shablan Isbia. He is the winner for today. A round of applause. <laughs> Very briefly, one more time, how do you feel? Humbled, humbled, and I'm so glad I could actually just give solutions to the problems that we have. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jabu, for winning, of course, this episode. Thank you so much to our judges, to our candidates, and also our studio audience for joining us. And a special thank you for joining us at home. Um, of course, we, you, you'll be vote, voting, right? I, I hope you'll be voting because our SMS line is still open. 340204 for your favorite leader. Um, and of course, next week, we are touching on alcohol abuse amongst young women. But in the words of Steve Jobs, well, he says, be a yardstick of quality because some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. From myself, Dumela Mototwane, have an excellent week. Goodbye.